Sup ninjas, Poir here, back with a super helpful guide for getting lots of monster parts as well as a new charm farm method, which I'll do a full step-by-step -step run through of. For those who played base rise, yes, the save scum method is back and actually faster than ever in Sunbreak, thanks to new materials. We also got two new melding options in Sunbreak, Anima and Reincarnation. This unlocks after beating the final boss and talking to Arboro, and you can only use master rank materials as fodder. So all your high rank stuff that you farm for a year for is basically useless. Those will only work with the previous melding options. So that means everyone playing starts from zero again, and you'll have to sink many, many hours farming monsters in order to RNG your way through this charm system if doing it normally. And you will want to meld in the new charm system as there are new skills and slots only found in the new melding options. Here is a list of all the possible skill combinations in Sunbreak's new system, and some charms can even have one level 4 slot too now. So I'll leave a link in the description to this chart if you want to see the possible combinations, but it is worth noting that some skills are absent from the charm system, such as the final boss's skills or blood rites, the skill I just made my longsword build around. You can check that video out in the end screen annotations. Luckily, aside from just hunting, there are various ways to get monster parts easy in order to fuel this charm hunting adventure, which we can do via mount farming, which is back and better than ever before thanks to the new golden wire bugs that can get you more drops, up to 5 shinies now instead of 3. So the best map to do this I found for me personally was the new jungle map, as it's fairly small and most of the monsters tend to be in the center or the right side of the map, meaning you don't have to waste so much time running around like you do in the citadel for example. But the best quest for this is found in the follower collab quest, then support surveys, then 6 star master rank, and then Operation Foggy Jungle, featuring Espinaz and Kami. The bonus monster that I've seen so far were Gore, Basil, and Rajang which give all high quality parts that were worth more than some of the lower rank monsters. Obviously you have to progress your follower system and master rank to unlock this, but once in, open your detailed map and go to the endemic life tab. Or you can just hit triangle slash Y and then search for golden wire bug. Two will appear on the map, one at the very start and one at the end. So now you warp to the nearest camp to the monster that isn't Kami or Espinaz, since we need to trigger a ride which is fastest from a non-quest monster. In this case, Gore. So grab the golden wire bug here, and then over here is an extra normal wire bug, which you are going to want three of those. And once you reach the monster, use your wire bug attacks to trigger the mount of the monster, and once mounted, take it back to Camellios. Against Kami, you can attack as much as you want, just make sure before the ride ends, to launch the monster into Kami. Do not use the mounted Punisher. Launching the monster will trigger a ride on Kami, which once on, now you can hit the other monster, Gore, several times. But this time be careful, you don't want this orange bar to get to full. So right before that happens, now you take Kami to Espinaz and start attacking it. Again, do not use the Mounted Punisher, instead slam Kami into Espinaz at the very end of the ride mechanic and ride Espinaz, and he'll get you any last shinies against the other two monsters which will usually chase you to this spot. And if you did everything correctly, you should get over a dozen parts in around 3-4 to four minutes tops, which is faster than most people can kill master rank monsters for around the same amount of parts. You can also bring Gathering Palicos with Pilfer on them to potentially steal more parts, but that is the mounting farming method. Pretty nice for those chill days that you just want some extra parts for your charms. But speaking of cats, you can get more parts from the Meow scenarios, especially the Curio Hunts, which unlock as you progress Master Rank, but as you can see, you get lots of parts that you can earn passively while you progress your Master Rank. Just make sure to use Lagny Apples if you can for some better drops as well. The second important thing is revolved around the Argosi. Make sure to speak to Nagi the Cat throughout your playthrough of Master Rank as some important features are tied to the Argosi. 
First off, there's a new feature called Backroom Deals here, where you can get random items instead of your targeted material. So I recommend using Backroom Deals on all three of your slots, as it's your best way of getting the new charm farming item, MP Accelerant. This effectively finishes a charm batch in one use, instead of you having to do a quest to progress it. So very valuable for the method I'll get into shortly. You can also get some melding materials here too, which give lots of points towards your meld. And as a last pro tip, it is worth noting that doing the arena shuffle method also progresses this. So if you want to stock up on a bunch of MP accelerant fast, you can do that shuffle method, which is a part of the charm method anyways. So now it is time for the charm save scum method 2.0. This is the fastest way to get charms and saves you from wasting dozens or potentially hundreds of parts on bad charms. So while getting good charms is still RNG, this makes it so you don't go bankrupt on parts for nothing. And again, if you need parts, you can just use the right thing like a torture belt or simply just grind master rank anyway, since we all gotta reach master rank 100 eventually to unlock more monsters. So charm method, begin. Okay, I'm gonna do this live for you guys so you don't miss any steps at all. So let's just get right into it. Step one, turn off autosave. Go to save data and make sure your autosave is off. In order to do this method, we need to basically revert back to where we're gonna manually save so we don't waste all the materials that we put into the meld. So make sure autosave is off because if you have it on, it's gonna save after pretty much everything you do which will lose you those materials if you get nothing good. So make sure it's off. And once you do that, now we do a hard save right here. So step one, auto save off. Step two, save. Save your progress before melding. Now go to a borrow. And now we can do the melding pot. And as you can see here, melding honey, nectar, and pudding. They provide a lot of points in addition to, you know, your normal monster parts that we farmed before. So. I'm just gonna use that for now, but I'm gonna show you just, uh, right, let's just do a couple melds. And as you can see here, spend one MP accelerant, say yes. Uh, you wanna do this for this step. Before we had to do arena to shuffle these or to like speed these up, progress these. Now we can just use this to immediately get our talismans. So it is now way faster to do this method. So take your talismans you just to check them out and just see if you have anything good. If you don't think you got anything good the first time, this is actually not too bad. Um, what we're going to do now is take all, As back out of here. Now we quit to the main menu, return to title screen, and do not save. This is important. Do not save during this step right here. So, no. You can press circle. Uh, and then quit the title screen without saving, yes. Because we don't want to waste all those materials. If you save here, you waste those materials, uh, which you don't want. Now, unfortunately, the game will remember those talismans that we have. So we're locked in those talismans. If I try to meld the same exact thing again, um, as you can see, all the anima I used is returned, right? I had started with four. But as you can see, the skills are exactly the same. Max Might, Crit Eye. So the game remembers. So in order for the game to not remember that, we have to do the arena shuffle method. But let me just quit out of here just because I wasted that real quick. So. Whenever you uh, don't want the talismans, quit out the menu without saving. So if the first batch of talismans you got weren't the ones you wanted, now we can do the arena shuffle method. So now hey we go to Orbo, Orbo, <laughs> then go to melding anima. And now we only craft one talisman. As you can see, there's five slots there. I don't know if you can see that with my character in a way. But yeah, now we just need a single one. So instead of all five being filled up, we just need one like that. So do that. Confirm. Right. Yes. Go. This time, do not use the accelerant. Say no. Don't use accelerant. For this step right here, step three is to melt a single talisman and do not use accelerant. And now we go Thank to arena. Because in order to get that talisman, we have to progress a quest. And arena is the fastest way, as we can just die. And uh, that'll progress the quest. So go to this guy, master rank. And you can pick Garen Golem or you can pick Espinaz. I like Espinaz. Right. I'm not going to spoil what later. the 6 star is, but I would probably put that one as well. Pick Gunner because they have the weakest defense. And basically we're just going to die here to the monster and that will accelerate the melding talisman. Just make sure to not pick up that bird. Because if you pick the bird, your, your health is going to go to full. So go over here, give him a little touch on the butt and let him kill you. <laughs> oh, 
almost Espinaz. Almost. Boom. Okay. Nice. Yay, we die. Sweet. Just what we wanted. And now here, I just like to spam circle. Just spam circle. It'll take you out all these menus without saving and stuff like that. So, and now our talisman should be done. Once we go to Ouroboro, we go melting pot and look at it. Yay, our talisman. Ba-boom. So now we take it. So this is step four, five, whatever. This is the last step. Um, after you do the arena shuffle, you get your talisman just like that. Now you return to title screen, but you save this time. Make sure you save. So return to title screen and save. You have to return to the title screen in order to shuffle the talismans again. So now we go back in and now we're back at step one. So now we basically just reset. That was the last step right there. Um, make one talisman, do the arena shuffle, die to the arena uh, monster, get your talisman, and now you save and quit and now you're back here. And just for safety's sake, I like to save again. Just repeating the same one, right? Step one. Save the game before our borrow. Hey and now we go melting pot, anima, okay then. accelerant, yes. This will be good. And now when we check the talismans, they will be All different. Done. As you can see, look at this, a different set of talismans. So that's how you do the arena shuffle method in order to, uh, yeah, hopefully get you guys some pretty good talisman. Redirection, level four, wide range, not too bad for, uh, I guess, hunting horn. <laughs> So, hope the video helps you guys land some better charms for future builds to come. Once you do get the charm you want, make sure to save the game afterwards, obviously, in order to keep your goodies. You can also turn autosave back on if you wanted to when you're not doing this method. And this method works for both Switch and PC, by the way, in case you're curious. So, if you found the video useful, please leave a like, it helps me out a bunch, and comment down below if you got any good charms in Sunbreak so far, or even after using this method. I'm still hunting for that chain crit with some slots myself, so good luck, more guides and builds to come. Join the Ninja Clan by subscribing for more Sunbreak Epicness.